Hi guys, this is Ken from Tech Open, back again with another video, this time to show you the Osmo Mobile 3. This has been out for quite a while, it's not something like particularly new, but I just decided on getting it now because I wanted to get you know more stable footage out of my smartphone. And uh, although I did try the Zoom 3 and 4 before, I had two of them, um, I wanted something much more compact that can fit in a smaller space and that's a little bit more discreet so you don't call as much attention when you're filming because that is something that happens when you're filming with a gimbal. People tend to stare a lot and um, you either get used to that or you get something smaller which is something like this. Now this really folds into a really compact size. It's, it has lots of nice features, great battery life, uh, awesome build quality. Uh, so yeah, let's check this out and see what's inside and see if it's worth buying or not. Okay guys, so let's take a look at the box. Uh, right here on the front, you can see how it looks mounted with the, uh, with the smartphone. Uh, here on the side, you can see the accessories that are included. So you have the gimbal, you have the connecting cable, a little carrying bag, and you have a wrist strap. The combo pack actually has a tripod and a hard case uh, included. This one does not have that, okay? Uh, it's compatible with iOS and Android, so you can connect them both with the, um, the app, uh, Mimo app, and you can get it on Google Play or on App Store. Uh, you have also this option, Osmo Shield, which is like uh, an ex extended warranty in case of accidents and stuff like that. And you have the QR code to read here if you want to uh, find out more information about that. On this side, you can see um, the device in more detail so really compact and that's one of the main advantages of this uh, gimbal and it fits in the palm of your hand so that's one of the improvements in relation to the mobile 2 this one is more compact you can fold it it's a little bit more ergonomic supposedly it feels better in the hand it has some improvements uh, compared to the uh, previous version and uh, yeah guys this is it so let's just open this and see what's inside so you can see it's completely sealed Okay, so now inside the case we have the gimbal and then we have this little box, nothing else inside. Uh, wow, this looks nice. It feels premium to me and I like the fact that it's so compact that it can fit in my hand. I do have a larger than average hand size but Awesome, look at this. It's perfect, super small. I mean, this is perfect for travel. You can see the little uh, thread right there for the, for the tripod. Um, you have the DJI logo here. This is all rubber. It's super small. Now, it does have a little bit of weight to it. I'll be honest with you. It does have a little bit of, it's, it, you feel the weight of this little guy. And you can see here how it looks. I like it. So I'm pretty surprised of the quality of this. You have the little USB port here. USB-A, you have the USB-C here. Uh, you can charge your phone with this if you want to, although uh, you know the battery is limited, you're not gonna charge your phone completely, just maybe for an emergency maybe. This is perfect for travel, perfect. You can see the little joystick here. You have the record button right there. You have the menu button and the power button right here. I believe this is for zooming. So you have wide and telephoto. Uh, keep in mind that this does digital zooming. It does not do optical zoom. So even if your device has optical zoom, uh, it doesn't do that. As far as I know, it just does digital zoom. So you will lose quality uh, while shooting with this, while zooming in. And then uh, this is all like rubberized. And this opens up like this for your, for your phone. Okay, so let's check out what's inside this box right here. These manuals, nothing else, various languages. I think this, this is like a warranty card or something or safety uh, manual. This is the warranty. Yes, exactly. This is the warranty card. That's a safety um, manual. And this is the manual itself. So you can see you have a little QR code to enter the Mimo app to download it for your uh, device. It has like a quick explanation. You get the camera bag, you get the uh, wrist strap, you get these little tabs right here. 
and you get a USB-C to USB-A uh, charging cable. Okay, so now let's check out the, uh, the carrying bag. So this is like microfiber. It's not like nylon or anything. It's a microfiber uh, case bag. And you can see you have the Osmo logo here on the front, which looks nice. It feels nice and soft. So you don't get your gimbal all scratched up. Pretty nice. And you have these little cords to tighten this and have everything nice and tidy in here so it doesn't get all scratched up. So if, you, uh, if you're really picky, about the case i would recommend getting the combo kit instead of this one okay so now let's check out the usb cable now in terms of length i'd say about a meter i guess i think it's about a meter long you can see the connectors here usb a to usb c uh, it's not a braided cable but it it feels robust it doesn't feel cheap at all okay so in order to attach the little wristband you can just thread it through here like so you can just place this on your wrist like this and you tighten the strap so even if this falls out of your hand you won't drop it on the ground so i do recommend to use this so you can see that on the base of the holder right here there's like a little thread right there now i'm not quite sure if it's to add weight to this to balance it out if you have some issues with balancing your phone uh, or if it's to add like accessories like, uh, you know, flashes and uh, microphones or something like that. I'm not quite sure. I'm going to have to check that out and find out what that little hole is for. Now, in order to unfold the device, you just pull this up like so. Let me just move this back a little bit so you can see a little bit better. And you can see it gets all wobbly because it's unbalanced. It doesn't have anything placed on it yet. But this is what it looks like and you can feel the grip is really comfortable everything is easily reachable uh very nice now i wouldn't mind if it had like indents here for your fingers that's kind of being picky but it's it's my you know personal opinion to have like have like uh, these indents for your fingers to to rest like securely in there but it feels nice okay it is a little bit thick so if you have small hands you will have a little bit more trouble to grip this I have larger hands you can see I cannot completely um, so I cannot completely grab the uh, the holder you know all the way around there's kind of a gap there and I feel that I really have to hold this to make sure it's secure if you have tiny hands you might have a little bit of an issue more here you know holding this securely but just keep that in mind okay so in order to power the device you have this little USB port USB-C port here on the right side and as soon as it's fully charged, the lights will stop blinking and it'll take you about two and a half hours to fully charge the device. Keep in mind that although you do have this USB-A port to charge your phone, you can charge your phone while it's here on the gimbal. Don't do it while it's charging the gimbal itself. Don't do both at the same time because you will actually vice the, um, the battery and it's not replaceable. It's an internal battery and you don't want to do that. And once it's fully charged, it's ready to power on. Uh, so I'm actually going to place the phone here before I actually power this on and in order to uh, place your device your phone on this you want to make sure the gimbal is switched off and what you want to do is you're going to get the gimbal while it's powered off and you're going to try and place your phone in here as uh, centered as possible as you possibly can you want to make, make sure it's really centered and balanced and you do it while it's powered off let me see if i can just change the angle of the camera so you can see this a little bit better so now it's kind of all floppy and whatnot and what we're going to do is we're actually going to um, power on the gimbal and to do that you long press the m button you hear this little sound and now the gimbal is uh switched on you hear that little beep and the phone is ready it seems pretty well balanced so far the first thing we're going to do is change this from portrait mode to landscape mode and to do that you want to double press the m button and you change it to landscape mode you can see that it seems pretty well balanced and another thing you can do uh, even after you're using this for a while is go to this uh, rear trigger button and you're going to double press it to make sure that the gimbal is centered so if i double press 
it centers the gimbal. Now, if it's unbalanced, you'll actually get a little message on the screen on the Mimo app. A little message will show up on your left uh, top left hand corner and it'll tell you that the phone is unbalanced. If it's unbalanced, what you're going to do is you're going to shift the phone like to the left or to the right till you see it's really perfectly parallel to the ground and balanced. And you can see it's pretty balanced now, pretty well balanced. So that's uh, pretty much it. Now, if you want to enter standby mode, which is a saving mode, if you don't want to completely shut off the device and you're moving like from one location to the other, you just want to leave it in standby mode. If you're gonna like pause for a while, you triple tr press the uh, M button and it enters this mode. You can see it's flat out and it's, it's kind of like in a standby mode. It's like a, a dormant uh, situation. So you can move from one location to the other and you know that it's not draining your battery. Uh, and keep in mind that after 10 minutes it'll in this mode after 10 minutes it will actually shut down completely uh, Now I'm going to center this again double press the trigger button it switches on and it centers back again Like so Now with the device powered off so I'm going to long press this to power off the device and you'll actually hear a little chime You hear that now it's switched off it's powered off now, let's say um, I have the device uh, switched off and I want to, now it's actually falling around. Uh, I want to know what charge is in the device without actually having to power it on. All you have to do is with the gimbal switched off, you press the M button once and it'll show you the battery level. You can see here, there's three little dots, which means it's at 75%. So if it were, if it were like at close to 100% or 90, I believe this will be completely full. Um, you can see here on the controls, you have the joystick, you have the uh, record button and the M button that we already saw, and you also have the zoom button on the left side. Let's talk about the joystick for now. You can uh, configure in the Mimo app, you can configure the speed at what you want this to pan. So this is what you use to pan the phone, you know, tilt it and pan it. Uh, and you can actually change how fast or how slow you want that to move. So I would recommend you leave it, you leave it at a very slow um, speed to get those, you know, that smooth movement. You don't see any jerkiness or anything. I would leave that at a, a lower speed. And you can also um, do something with a little bit of practice. Uh, if you hardly press the joystick, it'll go faster. But if you kind of leave it in, in the middle, you know, if you kind of get it in between, it gets a little bit of use, getting used to, but you can actually, you know, make it go slower or faster by the way you push this joystick. But like I said, you need to practice that a little bit in order to kind of perfect the movement. On this left uh, zoom joystick, uh, so you have telephoto or wide. If you want a wider angle, you push it down. If you want to zoom in into something, you push it up. You can also change the speed of the zoom uh, inside the DJI Mimo app if you want to. You can make it go slower or faster. Keep in mind that's a digital zoom only. It does not do optical zoom. Even if your phone has optical uh, zoom lenses, you do not have that option. It only does it digitally. Keep in mind that you will lose quality while zooming in. The more you zoom in, the more quality that you'll, you'll lose. Uh, and then on the trigger button that we spoke about, about a while ago. Uh, so you have various functions with the trigger button. I'm gonna actually switch on the, the device. Okay, so now it's powering on. I'm gonna center it. And I'm gonna double press the M button to go into landscape mode. Uh, so there's a few options that you get with the trigger button. If I hold this and press the trigger button and hold it down, you can see that the phone stays locked into one direction. It's not following the movement of my rotation of the wrist. So you can see as I rotate, it, the phone stays focused in one position. So if, even if it's like down like this and I move it around, it kind of stays in one direction. If I let go of the trigger button, you can see that as soon as I let go, the phone follows the movement of my wrist. Either, either it goes down or up or the sides, it kind of follows the movement. So that's what you can do with the trigger button. Another thing you can do with the trigger button, like I showed before, is if you double press, it'll center the gimbal. So let's say it's all crooked. And for some reason, it's like unstable or crooked. You double press and it'll go back to the home position, which is the, the most centered position available. And if I double press, on the trigger button, <clears throat> maintaining the double press, the second press, if I maintain it, uh, if I hold it down on the second press, you go into sport mode. So if I do one, two, now the, what happens is the motors get really, 
they, they speed up and you can use this for like sports movement really quick movement this is the option that you can use now if i let go you can see it slows down it gets much slower now see that okay guys so let's check out the dji memo app for you guys to get an idea of what you have included so i'm going to open the app i already have it installed here on my android device you can download it like i said from google play store or from the app store uh, on ios and you're going to get this little first uh, window it's mine is already connected it's very simple just switch on the bluetooth on your smartphone and then uh, the uh, gimbal should recognize your device then you're gonna have an icon on the top right hand corner which says to connect to your device you connect and you're ready to go and then if uh, we enter here on camera we're going into the main menu as you can see you have all these little options and we're gonna start from first we're gonna start here on the uh, right side so right here you have story mode now story mode has these little presets that you use to record your clips that you can stitch then together in the app if you want to and you can uh, share them to social media really easily and you have all these little options I'm not gonna go I'm not going to go into detail into each one of these apps but you can see uh, you have all these little options so if you're using this on social media a lot this might come in really handy uh, to do something really quick on the go if you're traveling and whatnot so pretty cool little feature there but I'm not like I said I'm not gonna go into detail with that then if we go into panel mode, which is the second option from the top down. In panel mode, you have two options available. You have the three by three uh, panoramic mode, and then you have the 240 degree mode. Well, the, the three by three, it, it's basically what it says. It does three photos up, three th photos to the right. So it's a three by three photo to form a very big image. That will be really handy if you're like shooting a building or something large that you can't quite fit into frame. That could be a really handy feature to uh, to use. Uh, if you just want a basic panoramic mode, a horizontal panoramic mode with you know with tilt uh, fixed, and you only have the pan option available. You go into this option, which is a 240 degree mode. And I'm actually going to leave two examples for you guys to see how this works uh, right at right after this. So let's check this out. Uh, and uh, you know pretty neat little feature there and it's all automatic you can start the shutter with the uh, button on the gimbal or on the screen itself so that really depends on what you want to do you do have uh, this little option right here which is this, this little hand it's called gesture control now what gesture control does is if you have it switched on you can use your hand to automatically take photographs so if I close this I'm having a little bit of trouble there it is Three, two, one, and it'll take a photo, automatically take a photo. So you can see it's tracking me now, it's tracking my hand. There are limits on uh, the distance that you can activate active track. So if you're using the rear facing camera of your device, uh, you can go from 0 0.5 meters, half a meter up to three meters distance. So it will support from 0 0.5 meters to uh, three meters distance. If you're using the selfie camera, you can go, I believe from, I'm not quite sure, but I think it's 0 0.5 also, but the uh, total distance, the, 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 the maximum distance you can go, I believe is two meters. So it's slightly shorter than when you're using the front facing camera, keep that in mind. So that's a pretty cool feature. You can also use it to shoot photos. If you're in photo mode, you just lift your hand, it'll take photographs, which it's a cool option. Uh, if you're filming yourself, that's really one of the main features that I was looking for in this device. Now, one thing I do not like about Active Track is its sensitivity. Uh, I hope they, they fix that with updates. This gimbal has been out for quite a while, and I haven't seen them improve that. 
uh, but you know, the problem is with any slight movement of your head, the gimbal will actually track it. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna kind of dr demonstrate what I mean. So you can see it's tracking my hand and any slight little movement that I do, you can see, see how I move my hand, it, 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 it moves. Any slight movement that I make, the camera is reframing. And I just wish it would just, you know, there was an option to set uh, like um, a margin at what you wanted it to 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 move. So let's say I just wanted it to like move when whenever my hand shifts out of this portion of the framing. You know, I just want I want to keep my the camera still while my hand is in this area or my face. Uh, and unfortunately, it doesn't do that. That's one of the things that I don't quite like about this. Unfortunately, that's one of the disadvantages. So very uh, helpful if you want to uh, shoot yourself by your by yourself. You know, you want the camera to follow you into different like framings, and you just lift your hand and it'll take a photograph. That's a pretty cool little feature there. Okay. Now shoot only if you just want this to shoot. You don't want it to follow. You can just switch to this option. It will not follow you. So it will stay fixed. But if you have follow and shoot, it will follow your hand. So if I raise my hand, it will identify my hand. It'll follow and shoot the picture. So I took a picture right there, lift my hand again, and it'll follow again. So a cool little feature to kind of frame uh, from one place to the other. So if you want to change between the rear facing camera and the front facing camera, you triple press the trigger button, one, two, three. And it'll change between the rear facing camera and the front one. There it is. Uh, if you want to center back, you put double press, if you want to change between uh, portrait mode and landscape mode, just double press the M button. Very simple. You can also do it on the screen if you like to. And then you have this option, which is one of the options that actually got me curious about this device, which is the spin shot. So this is really cool to create like B-roll, really awesome B-roll with music in the background. And you can do this little rotation kind of thing, which is really awesome. You can do some really cool effects with this. Maybe let me see if I can try and let me see if I can zoom and rotate at the same time. So one, two, three. Yeah, you can zoom and rotate all at once. See this? Kind of, kind of, you have to coordinate this. It's not really easy, but you can do that, which is pretty cool. And you can do really cool effects with this uh, by itself. Uh, if you have sport mode enabled here, uh, basically what it does, it speeds up the motors. Okay, so you can also do that with the trigger button, but if you press and hold, you have to press it twice on the second press you hold it down and you'll get uh, sport mode if I'm not mistaken I think it's a double press uh, and I can actually test that really quickly one, one two yep yeah, you double press and hold it down on the second press to go into sport mode but you can enable it here fixed if you want to uh, that's also an option uh, uh, of your own you can control the zoom speed if you want it slower or faster so that you get a smoother zoom or a quicker one, it depends. I would leave it at a slower mode to get it nice and smooth. You have this little option, which is control stick speed. And this is for the joystick. If you want to get like a smooth panning motion or faster, it really depends on, on what your preference is. I leave it at medium personally. On the press M button, you can choose what the M button does. You can have it, you can have it to either enter the quick menu or switch between photo mode and video mode. Personally, I prefer uh, the, uh, the first option, which is photo and video mode. Then you have uh, time-lapse. In time-lapse, you have um, the option to shoot in 4K, 1080p, or 720p. You can also set uh, the speed here of the gimbal if you want to, if you want it quicker or slower. Um, you can control the stick speed, the, the direction. You have more or less the same settings that we had before in video mode. 
uh, so not much to see there. I'll leave some examples of time lapse as well. And you can set different points at what you want the gimbal to go through. You can set like, I, th I think it's up to four points, different points. So you can have it like pointing to a building, uh, maybe pointing to like a river, and then maybe to a person or a tree or an animal or whatever. And it'll kind of follow the, uh, the path. You can see here, you have the path right here. Yes, you can set a maximum of four points. So you would plus, you would, you would press that plus sign to set the first point, the second one, and so on. And they'll actually register as you press, see? Um, if I move it here, I can set another point and another one. That's how it works, basically. I'll leave some examples of that for you guys to see. Superstar, superstar, you've been lied to. You've been lied, but the stars never lied to me. Tell them all, tell them all right beside you. Right beside me, you could be happy. Astrology is not part of me. And then you have hyperlapse. So hyperlapse, it's it's kind of a time lapse, but with uh, movement. You can actually move the gimbal. You can, you know, take it around, move it around. You can set the speed at what you want the time lapse to uh, to work. If you want it quicker or slower, and you can only set it at 1080p or 720p. So there's no 4K available. At least with my device, it doesn't allow it. Here on the top left corner, you can see the charge of the gimbal, how much charge you have. You have the charge of the smartphone, which is actually red already because it's almost dying out. I have the flash settings to know at what settings the flash is. And this uh, little right icon that you can see here with the gimbal um, is actually the mode in which you're in. If you're in FPV, uh, if you're in spin mode, whatever. Uh, so you have all that. And uh, that's basically it in terms of the menu. I'm not going to get like in too much details now I'm going to do some tests for you guys to see what this looks like in real life um, So I'm going to the uh, local park we have here, which is close to the river uh, In the historic area of Barcelos, which, which is where I live uh, And I'm going to do some tests just for you guys to get an idea I'm not going to go into too much detail if you have any questions any details uh, that you want to know more about this gimbal uh, I'll try and answer that. Just leave your uh, your questions in the comment section. I'll try to answer your questions uh, the best that I can. Okay, so now we're going to try uh, stabilization with the gimbal. I'll try running now. If I turn on sport mode, you can see how quick this gets. Overall, the first look of this gimbal is pretty nice. I'm pretty happy with this, uh, with the features and the compact size and you know all those cool little features. You can do some really creative stuff with this. And yeah, I definitely recommend this device. Uh, pretty happy with this. And I think it's gonna stick with me for quite a while. Uh, not, I won't be upgrading uh, that soon, I guess. I'm not quite sure if I'll get the new model when it comes out, if it comes out. But uh, yeah, I like this, guys. So for me, the pros of this are, like I said, the compact size, the ergonomics, the battery life, 
the features, uh, you know, all that you can do with this tiny little gimbal. Uh, it's, it's amazing. I definitely recommend it if you're traveling. Lots of people are traveling now and they want to get some really nice shots for their, you know, their home videos and all that, their family videos. This is an awesome option, guys. It will improve your videos like a ton. It won't turn you into a Steven Spielberg, but it will definitely help you out in improving your videos and getting this really smooth footage that looks really awesome uh, after editing and hitting some music in the background and all that. It'll look awesome, guys. Yeah, I definitely recommend this. Uh, cons. Let me see, cons, uh, maybe a smoother panning option, even smoother to get some B-roll, some really nice B-roll. Um, I mean, I can't really figure out any like big cons about this because I'm, I'm pretty happy with it so far. Maybe in the long run, I'll have some like gripes about this, some little picky things that I will have to call out about this. But for now, it's awesome. So guys, I hope you like this video. Uh, I tried to make it as short as possible, but I also want to talk about all the details of the gimbal that I can. I haven't gotten into all the details because this video would be like super long. I'm gonna try and do a, another video, another like a compilation of videos with the gimbal, with all the features. And if I can, I'll kind of post it on the channel for you guys to see the final result of what you can do with this. Uh, this one was just like a test video so you guys could check out the features, the overall features. So guys, if you like this video, I really appreciate it if you hit the thumbs up. Uh, leave your comments. If you're new to the channel and you'd like to subscribe, I'd also thank you a lot for that. It's a big help for the channel. And I'll see you in the next video. See you later, guys. Bye-bye.